welcome uh, to this edition of FICI Fast Forward as part of the budget with FICI. Uh, it's, it's indeed a great uh, privilege and pleasure to have with us uh, Mr. Subhakan Panda, uh, who is uh, currently the Vice President uh, of FICI, but he also runs a very successful business, uh, uh, which is a significant exporter uh, from India, in fact, the largest exporter in its uh, category. So very uh, focused in manufacturing. He's been leading the FICI manufacturing team uh, and the committee for uh, a few years. So welcome uh, to you, Mr. Panda, on this uh, FICI fast forward on budget with FICI. Thank you very much. It's uh, good to be uh, on this with you. And uh, thank you for the very kind introduction. So if, if you were to just begin before we get on to the uh, nitty gritties of the budget, uh, you know, during this current disruption, uh, many uh, companies and countries are looking at uh, India as an alternate uh, manufacturing destination. Uh, how do you see this uh, shift and is it going to become a reality soon? I think that's a very important question that you have asked. Uh, indeed, uh, it's not just uh, the disruption uh, which has uh, led uh, you know, companies and countries to rethink their uh, sourcing strategies, but uh, I think there's a little bit of geopolitics involved here as well, uh, which uh, is getting together to sort of give India a second opportunity to crack the manufacturing uh, conundrum. Uh, as you know, uh, despite all the efforts over various governments, manufacturing as a share of uh, GDP has stubbornly sort of remained around uh, 15 to 16 percent. Uh, and it has been every government's desire, including this one, to, uh, to somehow uh, to propel that forward. Um, and I believe that there is a unique opportunity today, as I said, both uh, brought about by the pandemic, leading to a rethink of sourcing strategies, as well as geopolitics in the region. Uh, and in this context, uh, you know, I think it's very heartening to uh, to hear no less a prime uh, no less a person than the, the prime minister himself mention that we will do everything that it uh, that is required to uh, to make sure that we don't uh, miss the manufacturing bus. Uh, and indeed, I think uh, you know we are seeing vignettes of that. Um, I mean, right through the the lockdown period, um, uh, as we as we know, having interacted with uh, with. Uh, various ministers and, and committees uh, uh, of the government, that there is a desire right at the top to use, um, you know, use this opportunity or sort of uh, convert, uh, I should say rather convert um, adversity into opportunity uh, and ensure that, uh, that India gets to be a part of uh, the global supply chains. And indeed, uh, as we get to get around to talking more details, uh, uh, you know, what will come out is, is, uh, is all the steps that have been taken, such as the PLI, PLI scheme, uh, among others. So now that you brought up the uh, PLI scheme, which is one of the reforms which is actually done uh, during the last few months, uh, how do you perceive, uh, you know, PLI is only one of them, how do you perceive the reforms which actually began last year with the budget? Uh, when they reduce the uh, tax for new manufactured uh, units to 15% and, you know, uh, and things like that. So how do you uh, perceive the reforms done over the last year and uh, some of the possible implications on the manufacturing sector going forward? Well, obviously very important uh, measures. So, uh, you know, it was very important for uh, India to, to provide uh, an attractive uh, uh, you know, set of uh, a basket of opportunities to uh, to get in new investments and uh, in various sectors, uh, and in that context, the the reduction of uh, um, uh, tax rates uh, for manufacturing new manufacturing entities to a level of fifteen percent uh, is is actually a very very important uh, development because those are at uh, levels uh, you know at par with uh, with any other uh, potential uh, destination for uh, manufacturing companies looking to to invest and, and uh, grow. Uh, so from that point of view, certainly a very important uh, measure. Uh, but more importantly, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the other steps which have been taken through the year, uh, such as the focus on ease of doing uh, business reforms. And again, this is an area where FICI has been extremely active, as you would be aware. Um, and I think the numbers speak for themselves that, uh, that uh, an average Indian company 
in the manufacturing sector has anywhere between 3,000 to 6,000 touch points a year in terms of uh, compliance requirements. Whereas if you look at uh, several of our Southeast Asian neighbors, that number is uh, closer to maybe five, 600. So there is a lot that can be done. And I think, uh, think measures are being taken to, uh, to truly make uh, it easy for, uh, in, uh, for uh, investors or, uh, or existing businesses to, uh, you know, to run their businesses with the least possible interference. Of course, there has to be oversight to ensure that all norms and regulations are being followed. And I don't think anyone has any problem with that. Uh, so ease of doing business, I think, is one of the areas which has received substantive attention during the last one year. And I think uh, good things will come out of it. Uh, and then to get on to the point about the PLI scheme, uh, that has been, that had been tried before with, with a single sector, but again, uh, on the theme of, uh, of uh, how to convert uh, adversity into opportunity. I think in the middle of the pandemic to come out with a, with a big bang announcement, uh, expanding the PLI scheme to 10 sectors which have been carefully chosen uh, for maximum impact, be it in terms of uh, reducing imports or, uh, uh, and, and, uh, or uh, you know, enabling uh, exports. Uh, and the numbers I think speak for themselves, which is that um, over the next uh, five years, uh, the government looks to uh, looks to pay out about uh, 26 billion dollars by way of incentives, uh, and if all goes well, that will translate to a little more than half a trillion dollars in terms of top line. And these are stunning numbers. And uh, what this will certainly do is again uh, get people to invest. Uh, it will certainly, you know, that sort of uh, growth uh, in terms of scale, etc., will uh, clearly lead to to creation of jobs, which is of course an important. Um, uh, important criteria. Uh, but I think the, the true intent of this uh, scheme is actually to give confidence to the, to the Indian entrepreneur that uh, the government is extremely serious about providing a boost to the manufacturing sector. Uh, and something like this is, you know, one shouldn't look at the PLI scheme only in the context of a five-year, um, uh, you know, five-year target where um, uh, a certain amount of incentives will be, played, uh, will be paid out. I think it is sort of the, the start of a virtuous cycle because the idea is to scale up um, so that uh, after five years, uh, you know, companies in these uh, sectors, uh, you know, who play their cards right, uh, will really be, you know, have that runway to, to take off and, and uh, move ahead with uh, conviction. Interesting, you know, we began this conversation with you saying that, you know, we're stuck at that 16% of GDP. Uh, people are looking at, uh, manufacturing in India, looking at India as an alternate supply base. The government has actually done a lot of uh, reforms in between since February 1 to now. So we are coming to the next uh, February 1, 2021. What, uh, in your view, are the key uh, things that the manufacturing sector would like to see in budget 2021? Well, uh, this is uh, going to be a very, very important uh, budget because coming as it does in you know, after the, after the pandemic where uh, economies worldwide, not just India, but economies worldwide have been uh, affected by the measures that had to be implemented really to, to bring things under control. Um, but now we are at a phase where uh, the early trials of the vaccines have all been very encouraging. And in fact, the vaccines themselves are being rolled out. Um, and hopefully, uh, you know, in the next uh, two to three months, uh, we will get to a stage where uh, you know there will be already there is a, a significant progress in terms of containing the spread of COVID-19, but uh, you know hopefully it will be relegated to the annals of history sooner rather than uh, later. But in that context, coming as we are uh, coming up with a budget at a time where um, the economy has taken a hit to uh, uh, on, on this account and um, uh, collections etc. Government revenues have been impacted. Um, of course, uh, as you would know that, um, you know, the, the turnaround has been uh, equally sharp. I mean, a lot of people talked about a V-shaped recovery and indeed it does look like, uh, you know, that is the alphabet uh, that we will be talking about uh, a lot uh, this year. Um, so GST collections have bounced back uh, to be above one lakh crores for, uh, if I'm not mistaken, three consecutive months. And uh, uh, December, 2020, of course, uh, registering, the, uh, um, uh, registering the highest ever, um, uh, GST collections. So all of these are uh, all of these are uh, very very encouraging signs. But to get to budget expectations, uh, particularly from a manufacturing uh, sector point of view, I think one of the one of the key requirements is to fast track infrastructure projects. 
because of uh, I think the possibility of uh, of uh, a dual impact. One is that uh, investment in infrastructure is clearly going to provide an impetus to demand, which uh, everybody, Fiki included, has been talking about as being very very essential to to sustain uh, this recovery and and provide it uh, you know push it into the next uh, orbit. Um, and secondly, uh, I think you know pandemic aside and everything else aside. Uh, infrastructure is one of the constraints if we look at the country uh, in general. And while that has slowly and steadily been addressed by way of new um, airports, uh, highways, rail connectivity, uh, et cetera, uh, I think this is a unique opportunity uh, available to us to sort of um, you know, invest in infrastructure, thereby providing an immediate uh, boost to demand, but uh, also the net effect of that infrastructure coming into play is to actually, uh, you know, in and in and of itself, provide a boost to manufacturing by, you know, making logistics and other things a whole lot uh, simpler. All the traditional one of the traditional constraints which have um, actually held back manufacturing to some extent in India. Um, I think from a from a uh, from a manufacturing perspective, one of the things that I would like to see in the budget is a, a huge emphasis on uh, R&D, somehow to incentivize R&D. Because we can't be reliant on on uh, you know technology uh, coming in from from uh, uh, from elsewhere. I think we have to yes we have to adopt technology uh, wherever you know wherever the best uh, technology in any field is available. But I think it's high time that we that we got around to um, you know innovative uh, products and, and innovation in general uh, ourselves. And therefore, I think it is very important to uh, to um, incentivize R and D. Um, and encourage Indian companies to to uh, uh, to see this as a means to uh, move up the value chain. Because I don't think uh, the aim is for when we look to to uh, to increase exports. Uh, you know, we can't be at uh, at uh, exporting commodities or or one level uh, beyond that. We really have the value chain if we are to uh, to truly become uh, a modern uh, economy, which uh, you know which. Uh, uh, holds uh, uh, you know pride of place uh, in in the global economy. If you look at uh, if you look at uh, the manufacturing sector, many people argue that uh, we are not competitive. Uh, whether it is cost of capital or you know uh, the cost of logistics or the cost of power, um, or whether it is the uh, you know the entire thing about uh, uh, the actually the just cost of doing business, you talked about the ease of doing business, but the cost of doing business. So how do you see this budget actually addressing uh, those areas? Uh, you're absolutely right about, uh, you know, it's not just the ease of doing business, but, but also the cost of doing business. And uh, in, in and when it comes to that, there are, um, you know, several factors, whether it is, uh, whether it is logistics or power, as you, as you mentioned. So clearly, from a logistics viewpoint, I think the way forward is infrastructure, uh, as I mentioned a little while ago. Um, and uh, from a from a power perspective, uh, I would see that uh, I would say that it is very important to uh, ensure that uh, manufacturing companies, especially energy intensive uh, 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 products, uh, have access to uh, to uh, electricity at competitive rates. And that can only happen by further pushing ahead with the electricity sector reforms, such as limiting cross subsidy, um, such as allowing open access so that uh, you know companies have access to uh, the most competitive uh, uh, electricity rates possible. So, um, so reforms in each of these sectors. But um, I think one of the important aspects of the cost of doing business is also the cost of capital. Now, historically, uh, you know, for a variety of reasons, Indian interest rates have been uh, have been high, and uh, this government, in particular, through the last uh, you know uh, twelve months or so, has done a lot to try and, and RBI I shouldn't miss out on RBI, of course, have done a lot to bring down rates, and I think it's really important to see that uh, transmission of lower rates come through. But that apart, I mean, that's something that uh, that is talked about a lot. But that apart. I think there is also a sort of a unique opportunity at this moment, uh, given the historically low interest rates around the world, for the government of India to sort of uh, look at raising long-term funds, uh, which can be, uh, you know, assigned uh, to whether it is the infrastructure sector or uh, or industry in general. I mean, we should really, in my opinion, be looking at, uh, you know, let's call it the build India bonds, which is what Piki has referred to in its uh, in its recommendations. 
So 25 to 50 year uh, uh, duration bonds. And as you know, interest rates are historically low today. And uh, if we're able to, to you know, lock in these rates, uh, then I think there is, uh, there is a significant boost that can be provided to, uh, uh, to uh, investments, uh, to, to, the, to bringing down the cost of capital, thereby enabling uh, greater investments. And I think there is another, um, another area that we can look at to, to sort of um, reduce the cost of capital, which is the, uh, the huge war chest that India has built up in terms of uh, foreign exchange uh, reserves. Um, I think it'll be, uh, it'll be a very good idea. And this is again, something that has been advocated by Fiki uh, uh, in the past, which is that a, a, a small uh, portion of that, five, 10% of that, um, of, the, of, the, uh, of our foreign exchange reserves, if it is uh, set aside for uh, lending to Indian companies at, uh, at uh, dollar rates, um, that is something that, again, I think will, will provide a significant uh, boost to, uh, to investment by way of bringing down the cost of capital. So, you know, one of the uh, things about the PLI scheme was where they're attracting, uh, this, uh, you know, states to set up, uh, you know, uh, kind of manufacturing hubs. But beyond that, you know, uh, is there something which uh, the states, for example, in the Atman River uh, program, they incentivize the states for doing some specific urban uh, sector reforms? Is there something by which the central government could actually incentivize the states uh, to promote manufacturing uh, and so that the cumulative impact of the incentives, both from uh, the center and states, actually? encourage uh, people to set up manufacturing in India? Well, I don't think there's any doubt about the fact that the center and states need to work in conjunction uh, with each other, in harmony with, uh, with each other to, to have the best possible results. Um, I mean, take a look at uh, the PLI scheme or the, the intention of this uh, government uh, to create an Atmanirbhar Bharat or a self-reliant uh, India. Uh, well, the center can only envisage the scheme, uh, the scheme and, and uh, you know, set aside uh, adequate budgets for it. But the actual investments are going to be grounded in various states. So in that context, I mean, the states not only have to uh, be on board, but uh, really you know, work with, uh, in harmony with the center to ensure that, um, that uh, you know, investors and investments are truly facilitated in the best possible manner. And to also sort of pull you back to the point I made about the ease of doing business and compliances, let's not forget that a vast major, I mean, a vast number of those compliances are actually at the state level. And a lot of those are, are either state subjects or there are, um, you know, uh, they are overlapping with between the center and the state. So even when the center talks about and takes steps towards ease of doing business, uh, the states also need to be um, uh, on board to ensure that the, the onboarding process, uh, if I were to call it that, uh, for a new investor um, and, and the, you know, the handholding uh, uh, happens properly to, uh, to uh, ensure that investments um, uh, you know, come through smoothly and are provided the best possible uh, opportunity to flourish. So clearly, uh, you know, the states have a significant role to play uh, in as much as realizing um, um, uh, you know, the desire of, of attracting in the investments. And um, I think in that context, um, uh, each state has to sort of do its own analysis about, um, you know, which of these uh, 10 sectors or there may be more than 10 going ahead is best suited and, um, uh, you know, for itself and how to take, uh, take those forward. I mean, if I were to take the example of Odisha, um, anything which is metals and minerals related, I think Odisha is a natural destination for that. And that doesn't mean that Odisha shouldn't and will not uh, you know, look out for other uh, sectors. But I think each state has, has to also sort of do a SWOT analysis of you know, where it is best suited to, to take things forward. And, uh, and I think in, in that way, center and states working together in harmony can uh, result in, in, a, in a very good outcome. Thank you for that. It's very interesting because you're, you're, what you're suggesting, in addition to the competitive federalism that is uh, promoted through rankings and all over this, uh, we could actually look at a cooperative uh, federalism model where uh, states cooperate with the center and cooperate with each other uh, to find the best places for investment in a particular sector or the best way for a company to relocate 
and not really uh, compete. One of the key things that a lot of uh, people are talking about is that uh, private sector consumption has declined and even government uh, expenditure uh, for consumption in, in that kind of sense has declined. So what could the budget actually do to, you know, give a fillip uh, to consumption? Look, I think the, the reduction in consumption is but a natural corollary to the uncertainty. And, uh, you know, while I think the central government has done very well with its nuanced policy of uh, saving lives and livelihoods, um, uh, that doesn't take away from the fact that generally there is a little bit of anxiety about, uh, you know, is, is the pandemic truly behind us? Uh, I believe the pandemic is on its last legs, especially with the wide scale rollout of, uh, the, of vaccine, vaccines, et cetera. Um, but I think it is very important to, to instill uh, confidence in the mind of the consumer. Um, so that is one thing. And uh, secondly, uh, fiscal stimulus is, is also sort of uh, necessary at this point in time. And uh, in this context, the finance minister had repeatedly said in the past, you know, whenever she has, uh, she has um, uh, announced uh, various measures to, to boost the economy, she has repeatedly made a point that, you know, this is not final, this is not it. The government of India is committed to doing whatever is necessary to ensure that the recovery comes and the recovery is sustained. Now we have seen the recovery coming, the V-shaped recovery, which, uh, uh, which everybody talked of that, we have seen it, uh, seen it now. It's a question of now sustaining it. And in that context, the, the statement that she's given a little while, uh, uh, I think a week or 10 days ago, to say that this will be you know, one of the most important budgets, it will be a path-breaking budget. Um, I think we are all eagerly uh, waiting to see what measures will be taken. And I think in, in this context, perhaps what was holding back um, uh, you know, uh, uh, a larger stimulus measure in the past, um, uh, which is uh, uh, fiscal uh, deficit concerns, I think the government is in the mood to say that you know we will balance it to the best of the best of our ability, but we would rather err on the side of providing a boost to demand rather than somehow uh, constrain the economy. And uh, I think um, you know measures will be forthcoming in the budget to instill uh, confidence in the mind of the consumer and to to provide a, a stimulus so that um, you know it trickles down and and uh, provides a boost to uh, to demand talked about the PRI scheme and the budget and you know you've talked about uh, demand and of course finance but if the last question I were to ask you is how could the budget uh, 2021 uh, promote exports because significantly you're a large export uh, exporter from the country uh, but could the budget uh, 2021 do something in the area of exports? Well um, I think um, as far as encouraging exports is concerned uh, what is important is, uh, is again, I think, to bring sort of a, a greater, uh, uh, you know, confidence back to, to companies to invest, uh, to, to scale up output, to, to uh, uh, you know, measures in terms of both ease of doing business and cost of doing business to, to bring about greater competitiveness. Um, so, um, you know, reforms can be of many, of many shades. Uh, for example, the, uh, the the reform of the coal sector, which is being carried out right now, uh, will uh, it sooner rather than later have an impact um, in terms of uh, you know making uh, Indian companies more uh, more competitive by way of uh, assured supply of uh, fuel at uh, at uh, competitive rates, um, and not to mention, of course, uh, it will also cut down on unnecessary import of coal, which. Uh, uh, which we have been doing despite such vast reserves in our own country. But little, little steps, or not so little steps like this, will certainly uh, you know, go a long way to, to ensure that uh, you know, companies uh, are competitive. But um, as, far as, as, uh, you know, from the as far as the corporate sector is concerned, I think what we have to also do is, is uh, you know, look to scale up capacity, look to cut out any inefficiencies in the production processes, uh, look to be as efficient and competitive as possible so that we use the, the, the runway provided uh, by the government to, um, uh, to become globally competitive and uh, also from a qualitative point of view, uh, you know, be at par with the best in the world so that, um, uh, you know, that is the way that one uh, truly integrates uh, uh, itself with the, with the global uh, supply chains. But uh, in this context, uh, one other, one small uh, point that I would like to make 
is that uh, you know we are now in the process of um, of uh, transit uh, transitioning from the earlier MEIS scheme to the RODCAP scheme. Uh, of course, the RODCAP scheme is um, uh, valid from uh, from the first of January of this year. But uh, you know, while the government has already said that the rates will be announced soon, I think that's something which needs to be uh, to be looked at forthwith because that will again give a little bit of uh, clarity to to exporters with regard to you know what uh, what they can expect in this regard, and that will help uh, the planning and the budgeting process be a little uh, smoother. Thank you. That was quite a fascinating discussion. We started about your expectation uh, from the budget to invest in infrastructure, which will kind of create its own demand. Uh, to look at reducing the, uh, improving the ease of doing business and re reducing the cost of doing business, uh, as well as looking at uh, promoting innovation, uh, look at uh, you know, the whole issue of the cost of uh, logistics and the other cost, basically making uh, India more competitive, uh, stimulating demand. Uh, maybe you, know, you talked about the PLI scheme uh, providing adequate budgets for that and perhaps looking at more sectors and finally you know uh, providing enough uh, finances and resources for RODTEP so that uh, the exporters you know ha feel confident that at least they're not exporting duties out uh, from India and you're fairly confident that we can integrate into the global value chains and the manufacturing can you know possibly start breaking that barrier of 16 percent of GDP so thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you and all eyes now on February 1st to see what of this wish list actually comes true and how we can take manufacturing to its next level. Thank you very much for this. Thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity.